We live in an age where we have <laughs> we have we have Nephilim organisms with human brains that actually uh, the, the the brains of the human and the brain of these Nephilim mice things, uh, and we'll get into why we're calling them Nephilim, but. They, 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 are, they are connecting together. They're actually working together, which is strange. The literal brains of the human and the literal brains of the mouse have, have now come together and are working together. The brain tissue has not been rejected. It, it, it's actually been integrated, uh, human brains with their animal hosts. It's, an, it's absolutely insane, and of course it's sick and abominable, and... It reminds us of uh, Genesis 6, and it reminds us of Jubilees and Jasher. Did God create a mouse with human brains? No, of course not. We are the ones that went and did that. We are falling in the footsteps of, uh, 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 of, of our, our ancient... Well, I, let me word it like this. We were not doing it. It's not a we. It's a they, because obviously we as Christians don't want any part in it. But they, these, these abominable scientists... They are falling in the footsteps of their fathers. Read that about in the book of Genesis a uh, little bit. We read that about in uh, Jasser and, and Jubilees. Uh, it's, it's, it's all over in the ancient world. Every culture has a version of this story, and we are living it out even today. These mini human brains that's been implanted into mice has actually integrated with the, the, mouse, with the mouse, with the mice brain. It's a literal, you don't get any more hybrid than this. It's a literal mouse-human hybrid, which of course brings up all sorts of questions, all sorts of concerns, all sorts of days of Noah stuff. I mean, if this is not the days of Noah, or at least if we're not heading into it, I don't know what is, because that's exactly what we read about in Enoch, Jasher, Jubilees, and Genesis. Now, think about this. So today, if a patient needs an organ transplant, they, they have to get on a waiting list and, you know, they, they have to hope that someone with a matching organ dies before they do, you know. Uh, but in a, in a not too distant future, we're, we're just about there now. Uh, in some ways, we are there now. But scientists are hoping that we can grow backups and, you know, maybe even using mini organs, which are called organoids. That's what these are called, to extend our lives as we replace old organs with fresh ones before the originals fail. Now, you know, they, they, they would say, what better place to grow these organs than in the place where organs usually grow inside of an animal? So earlier this year, and we've talked about this before on this channel, but in a huge uh, step toward this eventual goal that scientists have, uh, you know, experimenting on mice uh, and, and, and trying to get something going here with uh, growing these organoids, um, Scientists that were experimenting on these mice got a lot more than they bargained for. But Inverse reported that researchers at the Salk Institute had successfully implanted human brain organoids into the brains of mice. And not only did these mini brains grow, but they actually integrated with the mice's brains. It's sick stuff. Now, these clusters of human brain cells actually forged connections to the mice's neurons and merged blood supplies even. Uh, so this research, which was outlined in a Nature Biotechnology article, so you know what to search for if you want to find it online, Nature Biotechnology article, it builds on a rapidly growing field in which other scientists grow all sorts of, you know, usable tissues in 